Um, so what does the gradebook allow you to do? It allows editing teachers to manage the grades for loop activities that have been released to students. So you'll have graded the work of the students, and this is now where you go and kind of manage multiple grades across multiple assignments. You can control the visibility of grades. That's something that's very important to people. They don't want students to see grades until such time as you know, you're happy with all of them and you want students to see them. You can change the way grades are displayed to students. The big thing the gradebook allows you to do is to organize and manipulate grades from across your page, including the option to create grade categories. So if you have loads of items on your on your page that carry grades, you know, you might have 10 items, each worth 10% each or something like that. And you might want to organize those, group them together and using grade categories. Each loop module page has its own gradebook. So if you have a module on loop, you know, ABC 101, that will have its own gradebook and ABC 102 will have its own gradebook. So every gradebook is unique to every loop module page. Every time you add a graded activity to a loop page, a space automatically is, is created in the gradebook for that activity. If you set up your weights correctly in the gradebooks, it will allow you to import all of those marks in bulk into the marks entry system at the end of the semester. So that's a huge time saving exercise for people. The great thing I think about using the loop gradebook is that by keeping all of your grading data in loop over time, you can really start to see how students are engaging in assessment both within a current semester but over several semesters by by looking back one thing i really want you to take away is this idea of what i like to call double entry when you are doing assessments and activities with your students you be using quizzes you might be using assignments the students are always graded in the original activity to begin with okay so if you have a quiz, you know, the quiz will probably auto grade the students, you know, with an assignment, you're probably going in and reading all the assignments and grading them, etc. And then when those grades are done in the original activity, they're then brought into the grade book, then they're kind of copied over to the grade book. And then once the grades are in the grade book is where you can kind of combine them and set the weighting and perform the overall calculations. The grade book often evokes fear and awe for many people across the university. It is one of the most complex features of Loop. It can allow for some really, really, really complex calculations and setups, etc. But in reality, there are two or three basic things that everyone needs to do. Control the grade visibility, use the gradebook to keep certain grades and feedback hidden until you're ready for students to see it, and then set your weightings. So what is each thing worth? for the overall module. That's really the only two things you need to do. Maybe if you have a lot of different activities and, and assessments and tasks, etc., you might want to organize them into grade categories. A couple of good points around gradebook. Set up your gradebook early. I think it's always good to set up your gradebook at the start of the semester because it means that students can kind of go in and then they can see all of the upcoming tasks and activities for the semester and what they're all worth, etc. So it's just good transparency for the students. Very importantly, when you are setting up your weights in the gradebook, they need to all add up to 1.0. So if you have two essays and a quiz, you're going to need to set them at maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 0 0.2. Loop is only interested in continuous assessment items. If there's any terminal examinations happening, any final exams happening, then that happens elsewhere and that data is treated is treated differently. So Loop is only concerned with, with CA. All of those weights should add up to, to 1.0. Again, many of you are running consolidated modules. It could be a good idea to use the, the categories. A really important tip, whenever you make changes to the gradebook setup, go and have a look at the user report because the user report will let you see how the student sees things. If you do something in the gradebook and you accidentally make a mistake, very often if you jump into the user report, you'll see something doesn't quite add up or something looks strange and then you'll know oh i'm after doing something wrong all students should have a grade recorded even if it's a zero for non-submission so let's say you have an assignment set up on loop and a student didn't submit the assignment you'll still need to go into the assignment and give them a zero because then that zero will transfer over to the grade book and then it will be included in the overall calculation for the student and then again once you're all set up at the end of the semester you can perform an import into the marks entry system i'm going to jump over quickly to 
to a loop page, so standard loop page. I'm pretending this is a module of some kind, and the module is broadly divided into two, into two big topics. So in topic one, I have a couple of tasks here for students to do. They have a quiz that they need to do. There's a, a discussion forum activity they need to do, and, and that's graded. And then I've given them two assignments, so two, two essays. Topic two of the module then is I have a little interactive video activity I want them to do, and, and that's going to be formative. I have a glossary activity I want them to do, also formative. And then they have another quiz and uh, two more essays to do. I've created all of these already on the page. I have a student who has completed the activities and received grades for each of the activities. I've done kind of the first bit of the double entry, if you remember that analogy. So now what I'm interested in doing is, okay, how can I organize all of the weightings now so that I get a final module score for my students? So what I need to do is jump into the grade book. So over on the left-hand sidebar, I just click grades. I'm going to click on setup. And this is my grade book setup. So if I look down the grade book, I can see there's an item here for each of the activities that are on the loop page. So again, as I said before, when I set up those activities on the loop page, automatically an item was created here in the grade book for each one of those activities. The first thing you, you need to check in your grade book setup is scroll down and make sure down here where it says course total, make sure it says weighted mean of grades. That is the calculation method that loop uses to calculate the overall score. Uh, and what that means is when we have this set to weighted mean of grades, it means that we can use this column here in the center to just directly set the weights for each item. So here's all my items from my module page, and I need to set what all of these are worth. So let's look at the Zoom classroom, for example. Okay, so that's just where I ha have my, my weekly classes with students. That's not worth anything, so I'm just going to go 0.0. .0. My students had a knowledge check, so that was a little a little quiz that they had to do. That's going to be a formative quiz, so I'll give that a 0, 0.0. They have their graded discussion forum. That does contribute to the module. I want that to be 10% of the module. So again, 0 0.1 is how I express that in the weights. And then I have two essays for topic one of the module. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to make the essays 0 0.2 each 0 0.2 0 0.2 so let's keep going now and looking at the other stuff so for the second part of the module i've got a formative video again it's going to be worth 0, 0.0 i have a formative glossary again 0, 0.0 i have a test so another kind of a quiz for the students that is going to be worth 0 0.1 so again that's going to be worth 10 percent and then my other two essays are going to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 so let me just add all these up quickly. So 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 is 0 0.4, and 0 0.1 is 0.5, and 0 0.2 is 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 0 0.1 makes 1.0. So again, as I said, all your weights have to add up to 1.0, and I'm happy with that. So I just click Save Changes. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do is set your weightings in the gradebook. Another thing you might want to do is control the grade visibility. This might be something you do before you start grading a student, or it might be something you do towards the end of the semester when you're checking grades and getting ready for your boards and stuff like that, is to control the visibility. Let's say my students have submitted their assignment A and assignment B for topic two. Before I start grading their assignments, and again, remember, I should be grading their assignments in the original assignment activity on the loop page. But before I start grading, I just come into the gradebook and I'm going to make these hidden from the students. I go to my assignment A for topic two, come over here to edit and click hide. page refreshes. So just scroll back down. You can see their assignment A is hidden. I'll do the same for assignment B. Just click the edit link and click hide. And that hides the second assignment as well. And they're both in gray. So what that means now is I can go to my module page. 
and I can go down to my two assignments and they're still there on the page. And students can still access them. So, you know, I might have students who are submitting late or, you know, they've got an extension. The assignment is still there on the module page. They can still submit to it. I can go in and I can start grading, but students won't see any grades or feedback because I have used the grade book to control the visibility. Jumping back in to the grade book, jumping back into the setup, so what some people like to do is after the deadline has passed for an assignment, they jump into the grade book and they set the item in here to hidden and then they commence grading. Then, of course, obviously, when you're finished grading and you're ready for everyone to see the grades, you obviously need to make this visible again. If you remember before I mentioned about the user report, the user report is a really good way of seeing what students see. So if I scroll up, now, and I go to view here in the grade book, I've got lots of different reports to choose from. And the report I want is the user report here at the end. So what it's asking me to do is it's asking me to select a particular user. So I'm going to select Annie as my student. And then I'm now viewing Annie and I'm viewing the report as if I were Annie looking at the report. So if I scroll down, what does Annie see? So we've got the Zoom classroom. There's no grade associated with that. So that's fine. I've got the quiz here. I can see the grade for the quiz, 50%. That's fine. The forum, I got a satisfactory rating, which equates to 50%. So that's fine. My two essays here, I got 25 and 85. My formative video, I got four marks in the formative video. The glossary, I got a very good rating in the glossary. And then in my post-class test, I got and then you'll notice, obviously, from Annie's point of view, the other two assignments aren't visible here because they're hidden. So Annie can't see anything about those two assignments in the gradebook. And also, as a consequence of something in the gradebook being hidden, the student cannot see the total. So you can see here that the course total, the, the ongoing module total, is empty for the student. And the reason for that is, obviously, if the module total was being displayed and there were items that were hidden, the student could could reverse calculate in their head and figure out, you know, what grade they're after getting for the hidden assignments. So the way the loop gradebook works is if there is something hidden in the gradebook, it prevents the students from seeing the module total. But let's say now I'm done and dusted. I've graded everybody. I'm ready for students to get their results. What I just do is I come back into the gradebook setup. I scroll back down to my two hidden assignments. I go edit show the page refreshes okay that's now in blue now not in gray anymore and again edit and show and that is also in blue so those are now visible so once again if i jump back into my user report so i click on view and i come down to user report select annie and i'm looking at annie the user report now so now when i come down I can now see my two assignments here are, are here again, 40 and 65 is what I got in those assignments. And what that means now is because now everything is visible in the gradebook, I also now have my final total for the module, 52%. So that's the, the final mark that I get. You know, this module is 100% CA, so that's a mark that I can get. And I can clearly see then as well in the first column here is the weight column. This tells the student the weighting of each module. So Zoom class. Classroom is weighted at zero. So is the quiz here is weighted at zero. You know, the discussion form is weighted at 10%. The, the first two assignments are 20% each. The H5P is zero. The glossary is zero. And then the last few items then are again worth 10, 20, 20. And those are the weights that I set in the beginning. If you remember when I set 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that's how it's now displaying to the student. The important thing to remember about the visibility is if you hide something and then you start your grading, you need to make it visible again to the students. That's the number one issue that happens when students say they can't see their grades is usually because um, someone's forgotten to unhide the, the item in the grade book. If I jump back to my slides, what I said at the beginning is these are the only two basic things you need to do is the grade visibility, like I showed you, hiding and showing grades and setting the weightings. And that is really the only thing you need to really worry about. Anything else more unique, you can come and let us know. But really just focus on getting those two things sorted in your gradebook and you won't go much wrong.